He's entering his ninth season in the National Football League, and of his first eight seasons, half of them were Pro Bowl seasons. And he is a, a freshly signed, re-signed member or extended member of the New Orleans Saints. Three-year, $52.5 million contract extension signed uh, on June 11th, which means Cameron Jordan is buying. Good to see you here on the Rich Eisen Show. All no right, doubt. Cam. Buying breakfast for everybody. Are you really? <laughs> well, it's very odd that you would say that after breakfast. Uh, uh, I mean, if shucks. you're offering lunch, if you're offering lunch, that would be a more timely offer. I'm, I'm a breakfast guy, you know. Here in uh, Southern California. Yeah. Okay. Good to see you, man. How's the summer it. of Cameron doing? What's going on? It's been a blast. Legit a blast around the world. Did you go on a USO tour? Uh, I did? did. I did. I went on a honeymoon, a year late honeymoon. I don't know how that works. Right, Delayed, let's, start, let's start right? with that first. Okay. So, so you got, when did you get married? Last June. Last June. Uh, me and wifey then went from Los Angeles to Texas to New Orleans, New Orleans to Paris, Paris to Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi to Dubai, Dubai to Beijing, Beijing to Hong Kong. This is she, this, this this year. You're no doubt. This is like in a 13, 14 day span. Whoa. She dipped off, went back to L.A. because of our kids, because uh, she's a phenomenal mother. Yes. Uh, and I was just, you know, then I became uh, Cam for a night. I went off to Macau. And I, I gambled away, I gambled Macau away, which brings in, what, 10 times what Vegas does? And I understand why. Wasn't much winning there. No kidding. But, <laughs> what's, what's your game? Uh, Baccarat, if I have time. Oh, my God, oh. what are you, are you, James Bond? That's what I'm saying. I, I, you know how to play Baccarat? It makes me feel, it makes me feel uh, you, sophisticated. I was about to say, did you wear a tuxedo and go in there? And... I'm, screaming, I'm screaming monkey. I'm out here looking for face cards. It's all about the flip. <laughs> um, but, no, and then, um, of course, I saw after Macau, I went off to Korea, did a USO tour, and just... You know, when you're in Seoul and you're you're close to, or yeah, when you're in Seoul and you're close to that the, DMZ, the whole yeah. DMZ area, you just realize exactly what the troops give up, and it's like you, they put them in, in such a higher regard of what you ever had them in. And I've been, you know, I, that was my second USO tour. My first USO tour was out in the Middle East, and I did Bahrain, and I did uh, the UAE, and um, it's just every time you go, you just get a little bit more of what exactly people give up and what what their struggle is and what they're facing every day. And that's why I'm more more along the lines of when I say, you know, salute to the troops, it's like really heartfelt now. It's like sure, well, you, you grow up, you're like, yeah, I appreciate the troops and what they do for us going over there. But you actually see what they do and the hardships they go through. And you're like, <laughs> I know I'm shoot. on air. Blood, <laughs> shoot. Right, but yeah, everything shoot. that they do for us, you just it's the guy. It's our God given opportunity just well, to we're thank watching them. you in a tank right now. Rolling so away. What are you what are the players? I mean, what are the uh, troops ask you? Do they? Did you run into some Saints fans? Did of you? course. I mean, there's like Saints contingencies. Like in everywhere we went to, every camp we went to, they're the Louisiana boys, they're the Swamp boys, they're you know 504 boys. Um, it's always a group. And when I say boys, there's there's men and women, but they're you know, I guess the moniker is sure. Like people would be in right. the 21st century politically correct. 504 people would be the right uh, group that you'd have to associate. But I mean, it's just a lot of love, and it's such the same thing. It's just. You know, what do you, what do you do to get your mind right for a season? What is it that, you know, that you you partake from when you were younger to the time you are now? What was that transition period of like our team going three years of seven and nine to and now us being in the playoffs the past two years and you know, just the same questions anybody else would have. And, you know, they tell you they they wake up three, four o'clock in the morning just to watch our games. I mean, um, they're about as serious as fans can ever get. And I mean they're diehard out there, so Nothing but love for it. Cameron Jordan, the Saints here on the Rich Eisen Show. How often do you think about the way the season ended? Um, just every time I get on a, a show like this. A show like this. Okay. But normally, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, but normally, uh, it's, if anything, I'm, I'm always focused on just this next this next stop. Because of the way it ended, it's like I don't even want to. It's like I don't even want to focus on how it ended. I want to focus on what I can do to be better. If I could finish every game, um, sort of like how we we were trying to close out. You know, Dallas at the end of the game put on defense to get the ball back, give offense another opportunity. That's how, that's how, how my mindset works. Sure. Just another opportunity to give our offense another chance. Well, I guess that's another way for me to get into the fact that all season long we're going to be talking about it anytime that there's a pass interference penalty that gets challenged. Right. I mean, it is totally, it is totally changing the way that this game is going to get officiated this fall. And I got a little glimpse of, you know, how it's going to go based on uh, having spoken to um, uh, Al Riveron, he presented to the NFL Network, the NFL Media Group, how this is going to work. Mm -hmm. And how, just like instant replay reviews, anything that is reviewable, once you open the, once you go under the hood, as they used to say, mm -hmm. once you start replay, anything that's reviewable can be replayed. 
and reviewed, just like if you say, hey, that should be pass interference, and they catch offensive pass interference, they're going to call that too. Huh. So, so like, the, like the Chris Jones hit on Tom Brady, would they review that? They will not because it's not reviewable. Mm. It's, not re it, it's not reviewable a hit on a quarterback. What is reviewable would be, well, we caught 12 men on the field. What's reviewable is offensive pass interference. Like, so if you're going to try and get a defensive pass interference call, they might come back and say, you know what, we can't pick up that defensive pass interference flag, but there's also offensive pass interference offsetting penalties. Oh. So this is the sort of stuff that's Double coming. Double-edged sword situation. Do you, do you like this concept? Yeah, look, out of evolution of, of a game, you have an outcome that's going to happen. Um, now, when you have something like with finished our game, you – could hope that there could be a review situation. You know, you figure you've got the best referees on the field who are going to make the best calls, and when they don't, that's where scrutiny comes. Um, and now you're taking it to a higher power. Hopefully that higher power is correct. Well, would you want – let's put it this way also. Would you want holding reviewed on the yeah, I mean, if, on, it, comes, if it comes back to bite us in the butt, I mean, that's going to suck. But at the end of the day – you know, it, it created a change, and in, that's all you can ask for. In the future, would you would would you want to say holding gets reviewable? I might have to say yes, just because of what happened to us. But at the end of the day, again, I can see either way. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna let if you're gonna let players play, let players play. If you're gonna review everything, let's just you know, as long as it's a level playing field. Cameron Jordan here on the Rich Eisen Show. The uh, uh, latest word uh, in the world of collective bargaining between mm. the players and ownership is that the NFL has put on – Yes, the CBA, that the players uh, – that the owners have put on the table the concept of an 18-game schedule, but – you're already laughing. Six – but <laughs> but they're only going to make you play 16 games. That somehow you figure out you don't play two of the 18. How would that even work? Have we talked about this? So you, you have – so people come to a game to watch Drew Brees throw to Michael Thomas to throw – you know, AK take off from the backfield or catch out of the backfield. Um, uprising stars to play. You've got starters that are only going to play for 16 games. If you present 18 games, I'm like, that's going to be a terrible idea. And for how does that even work? I'm like, oh, I'm going to take these two weeks off? Like, mm, week eight through 10, I'm going to take off. Eight and nine, I guess I'm going to take off. As a, as a competitor, as an ultimate competitor, I never want to be off the field. So you're not going to tell me I'm not going to be out of a game, especially when I have – my brothers who we are going to go through training camp with or, you know, people that you bleed, sweat, and win with, you're not going to tell me I'm going to be out for two whole games. It's not going to happen. So now I'm playing 18 games, and is there a compensation for this? It brings in too many aspects. 18 games, but you only have to play 16? I don't know how it would work, to yeah. be honest with you. And I, there is there is talk that quarterbacks might be exempt from this, that they would play all 18 games mm. because they're already, if you will, protected enough. Mm. Uh, I don't understand how it would work. All I know is that I would it would mess if a quarterback has now an 18 game schedule, it would mess with the history books. It would just mess with everything. No doubt. That's two extra games. But I would assume you would be compensated for it in the matter that more revenue comes in and the players association get a cut of that revenue. I'm assuming that that's the way it would work. Drew would throw for 6,000 yards instead of 5,000 yards. It's Boy, you're giving him 500 yards a game for those extra two games, huh? I mean, that's incredible. That's very yeah, impressive. Why not? I know you think he's, you know, great, but I mean, that's, I'm just, I'm just simply saying, if you start with 300, I'm really just giving him six. I know, I, I, so I, now we're really just giving him 320 I, I, a game. No, it's but by the way, never. I wouldn't put it past him. He's, he's the all-time leader in 400 yard games and five, I'm 500 yard. I'm just throwing off the top of my head. I bet he is the all-time leader right. in 500 and yard. I'll say he's games. throwing for 300 yards. So, like I said, I'm really just getting him a 700 yard breakdown. Two games of 350. Just, while just we're, saying, while we're sticking just real briefly on, on the business of things, are you hearing anything that there's a CBA conversation going um, on? You, honestly, is there anything you can share here? <laughs> honestly, I've heard rumbles and talks, but at this point, it's all it's all just hearsay. Um, you know, I'm sure when we get our NFLPA rep, uh, we'll talk to Craig Robertson. You know, we'll talk to Ernie Conwell. We'll talk to all of our guys uh, that's inclusive in these in, in the NFLPA. Um, and we'll be more knowledgeable about it. At this point, I don't think there's anything cemented. So I'm sort of, I'm sort of just like wait, wait till yeah. something happens. Wait to wait and see. Cameron Jordan uh, of the New Orleans Saints here on the Rich Eisen show. Okay, so the goal it's got to be Super Bowl or bust this year, right? I mean, I know it's very difficult it, to like, say that into like, a microphone, but I mean, it's Super Bowl bust every year, right? But I feel like every 
Uh, the past two years, you know, we hit uh, deep into the playoffs two years ago. We went one game further last year into our conference championship game. So all we have to do is go one game further, um, and we'll be in a Super Bowl, be in the place that we, we're, we're shooting for. Um, when we talk about our ability to get to the Super Bowl, I think we have all the right pieces. You're talking about coming out the backfield, Alvin Kamara. You lose Mark Ingram, but you add Latavius Murray. Um, you have Mike Thomas. Uh, you've got Trey Quan headed into his second year. Uh, Ted Ginn will be healthy this year. Um, you know, you talk about our tight end situation. We picked up a, a strong tight end. Um, we extended Josh uh, Josh Hill. Um, we've got a lot of great things going for us on offense. And then you talk about our defense, you know, how, how well our linebacker core will play. Um, our Basically, our entire secondary will be – the same starters as they were last year, and that's something that we haven't seen in in a while. Well, they're all from Ohio State, right? Last time I checked, you got Ohio State, and I mean, then you got, the, you got the Utah. Bayou Buckeyes. It's pretty amazing, no and, doubt. And your first four is ridiculous. I mean, you got the home Monday nighter against Houston, then you're at the Rams at Seattle, home for Dallas. I mean, on a Sunday night. Oh, what was it for? Uh, See, I don't even. You don't know. I, I know Come we have on. the first game is the Texans. I don't. I can't look beyond the first game. Oh, that's my job to do, I guess. So we have the Texans. Are you giving me the one game at a time thing? Did you just? It's always that? one game at a time. You're I don't not, know who we play not, preseason. Cameron Jordan, you and I go well, too far back for you to come on this show and give me the one game. At a time. You're just, not allowed. That's to do all. That. That's all I got to focus on. Well, at the Rams, at the Seahawks, home for the Cowboys, mm. home for the Bucks. That's a stretch. At the Jaguars, at the Bears. Uh, here comes Kyler Murray. What do you think of that idea, Kyler Murray, five ten and, and a quarter? They haven't announced him as a starter, right? Oh come they're, on! They're playing. They're playing that <laughs> round. I'm just saying, you know, uh, they haven't well, fully announced. Him I don't want to get in trouble, but you know, Steve Kime, the general manager, was kind enough to call in the Monday after the draft and say, yes, he is the starting right? quarterback. Because let's, you know, they. You don't you, you don't, don't do you don't all you don't kick that. out the number ten for number one to not make him the starter. You, yes, no doubt. But five ten and a quarter, but he's got all sorts of skills. What is Russ Wilson? Russ is like 5'9". I mean, what do you, what do you like? <laughs> I think. And he's a baller. I mean, you know, height means nothing when you, you you can evade and be elusive in the pocket and then throw dimes. And, I mean, I've seen, you know, I've seen clips of him throwing dime pieces. Right. So is 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 Russell Wilson the toughest guy for you to sack? Yeah, because all the offensive linemen are like 6'5 and above, and then Russ is out here skirting around like a running back and then throwing these these laser dimes. Now, you know, luckily, uh, Doug, I wouldn't say luckily, but I mean, fortunate for us, I feel like our secondary is strong enough to compete with their wide receiver core, especially now that, you know, Doug Baldwin's retired. Mm-hmm. Now who do you have? Tyler Lockett. And so, but either way, right. uh, so you talk about, you know, yeah. Russ is out there making moves. I mean, yes. he's a loose in the pocket. And, I mean, his pay reflects. What is he, the, the highest pay? He is that, sir. Ever, ever. He, ever. he is, absolutely. And Woo! you got yourself Can in, I get a hot tub? My got, kid is throwing a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Baseball, football, Can basketball. I we are. How old is your, how old is your, four. How old are your kids? My monster is four. He's oh, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his name? Tank. Tank Jordan. Legally, <laughs> Tank. Had to fight hard for that. Hold Tank on. Jordan. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, man. Would what you was like, that conversation? Yeah, exactly. Hold yeah. on a second. Okay, Hold his on. first name sorry. is Caleb, but come on. Oh, if, okay. So, so legally, middle question. name Tank. Guys it, go by the middle name all the time. Okay, so I, I asked you about the CBA negotiations. I had no idea more delicate negotiations you've been a part of. <laughs> no doubt. So, um, so you, what's what's your wife's name? Nikki. Okay, you sat Jordan. down. With, so she you, used to be a speed, so you and sit, then we kicked that out of there. <laughs> so you your sit, last name? Punt it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you sit down. You say, Nikki, I'd like to name our son Tank. Is that how this went? Uh it was like we had like three or four names, you know, everything from like Theo, and then I started playing out with it. It was like Theodore. My grandfather's name was Theodore. Sure. And then it was like somebody else. It was like a couple of T's. And I was like, what about Titan? You know, just throwing it out there. She's like, Titan. It's like, I sort of like that. I was like, yeah, like, you know, he's going to be a monstrous person. Titan sort of would go with it. And I was like, what about Tank? And she just like, she's like, well, I've got his first name, right? And so, so we just sort of leveraged first name versus middle name. So she took over first name and gave my man an incredible credit score out of the gates with Caleb. 
Um, <laughs> and then I hit him with Tank. You know, I'll say if he's anything like he, I was like, he could be a great lawyer. Tank Jordan sounds like a guy I would love to, you know, Tank to go to Jordan. go to battle for me. Yes, Tank Jordan exactly. does sound like you don't want any peace. Any peace. <laughs> I agree. My guy's monstrous. He's four. I, he's four. He's like wearing size seven T's or whatever it is in kids. He's monstrous. I have been in the very same negotiation <laughs> with you, sir. I had two boys first. My wife and I had two boys first. Okay. My wife said, we got to try for a girl. And I thought to myself, uh, the concept of we have to, like, what do you, what do you, like, no, she's, we, we have to try for the girl. Here's it. She says, if we try for the girl, we get the girl. You can name her. Mm. We try for the girl. Thank goodness we got the girl. Okay. And then my naming rights got immediately demoted to the middle name. Oh, <laughs> wait. So you went from getting the first two to just. No, the, I was going to get the first. Okay. Then I got the second. Mm. And, and I went with Mattingly. The name of my favorite baseball player of all time, Don Mattingly. Okay. So her name is Taylor Mattingly Eisen, and her initials are TME, which is too much Eisen, which she actually mm. is. And it has all worked out in the end. TME, I like that. Too much Eisen. So sometimes the middle name is is not too bad. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you can go, I'll say, and you can go by your middle name. I mean, you know, I went by my middle name until I got to high school. Is that, what is your middle name? Yeah, <sighs> Tyler. Nah, so you were Tyler Jordan for all those years? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, man. Uh, all, all three first names. Tyler, Cameron, I, Tyler, Jordan. I'll be very Whoa. honest with you, and this is no disrespect. I don't know if Tyler Jordan gets four Pro Bowl seasons in his first day. No, know. he probably would have got six. <laughs> <laughs> but then I would have tied up with Pops, and we would have been good. Tyler Tyler gets into can, uh, Cal no matter what. No doubt. Tyler Tyler is there all right, I'm, regardless. I'm, I'd like to keep you one more segment if you don't mind. Do you have to go somewhere? I don't. Okay. Well, I think the next place you go is the NFL Network, and I'm a per personally, uh, personally apologizing to my colleagues just after four or five. <laughs> All right, when we come back, I want to talk about your Madden rating and then uh, your affinity for the same wine that I have as well. Love it. The Jordan. And I, and I just visited. That's the last time I saw you. I just visited the vineyard. I, I have yet to get that invitation. Oh, wow. sorry. Back with, I can make a call, though. Back with Cameron. <laughs> don't call me Tyler. I'm the, the dad of Tank, Jordan. No doubt. When we're back on the Rich Eisen Show in a moment. Cameron Jordan here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's put it up on the screen right here. Uh, your Madden rating. Let's do Brockman, it. What do we have? What are we looking All at? All right, right, so Madden ratings are released today. Top 10 defensive linemen. Cameron Jordan, you are oh, ninth. Nine. Look at that. Ninth, 91, tied with Miles Garrett and Geno Atkins. Your okay, thoughts? Aaron Donald, great. Okay, J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt, Captain America, Fletcher Cox, a force. Snacks, Snacks Harrison. 95. That's impressive. Calais, 92. So you're telling me, me and Calais are... You're one apart. Michael, okay. Michael Pierce of the, of the Ravens is 92. I know you don't want to denigrate your fellow teammates, but if you do yeah, that, we're not. We're not here for this negativity. Ugh, I'm just going to accept it. Your fellow, your fellow players, I know, uh, your fellow comrades. I know nine out of the top ten. Okay. Michael Pierce. 91, there you go. See, Michael Pierce right now, if I, if I Mike Del Tufo, it seems like the... <laughs> the, the Jeff Walker. The Jeff I was just going to say, of, I can help you denigrate right anyone here. you want. Yeah, man. Mike Del Tufo is great at about just flat out denigrating colleagues, you. fellow colleagues. Hey, when you, and, I mean, when you have a tutelage under Terrell Suggs for so many years, you're going to be a great defensive end. Look at that. Cam, Cam Jordan, everybody. Good you know? answer. Good answer. And now he's a family over, huge clap right there. He's, at, he's over at the Cardinals, you know? He's okay. from my high school. Well, he doesn't claim us. He's from my rival high school, I guess. Okay. Still hurts. In the two minutes I have left, um, the Jordan Vineyard. Uh, mm -hmm. Makes some tremendous juice. We met at a Los Angeles event recently. Absolutely. Now Absolutely. you visited the vineyard. I definitely visited. Took the little ATV and, and smashed through the whole 1,200 acre situation. Well, you didn't smash got, through. I mean, I mean, it's yeah. ATV. I was smashing. Careful. <laughs> hey, well, that's, that's what I'm saying. I probably rocked a couple grapes. It's a new vintage. <laughs> um, there you are holding up the bottle right there. The Jordan. Now, absolutely. Is this the vintage you sent to Cam uh, Cameron Newton? Uh, did you send that to Cam Newton after you swept them a couple no, of years that was, ago? No, this, uh, this is the 2015 with the French Oak. Okay. Uh, it wasn't out yet. Okay, I you got know, it. He didn't, he didn't catch the French Oak. He shot the American. Did you, did you ever hear back from Cam after you sent of him to Jordan? Of course not. Of course not. I just I saw his uh, I saw his cleats the last time he lost, and then, um, yeah, that was, sort of, that was sort of the end of it. Hmm. That's By the way, that's mm. he didn't send a thank you note? Thanks for the right? wine? Right? That's what I'm saying. It's a phenomenal bottle of water. You were, or water. But yes, with juice. juice. Yeah, right. right. Exactly. Um, it's a um, bottle of wine. You know, I feel like it pairs well with everything. It's light. Is that going to be your calling card from now on? When you sweep a, a, a uh, rival, rival, you're going to send them some Jordan 
one? I feel like I probably owe a quarterback some then. I probably should send Matt one. You sent you already sent Matt Khalil. You see him week one. He's with Houston now. Ooh. Yeah. You, you could do that in advance of week one, I'm sure. I'm I was sure. thinking Matt Ryan. No, I was just oh, thinking, Matt I was Ryan. thinking quarterbacks. Like oh. linemen don't. They're like, he's not gonna appreciate wine. He's, just, oh, he's five God. burgers in. Like, offensive lineman. <laughs> five you know? in. Wow. There are some. There are well, some you're 340. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know exactly what you're eating yeah. to sustain that type of weight. You're not counting calories. A lot of tacos. <laughs> All right. Well, Taco the, Tuesday every day. Um, <laughs> thanks for the. Thanks for the stop by. Thanks for letting you. Letting us yeah, uh, know. You're I appreciate in town. the healthy banter at all times. At any time. At Cam Jordan ninety four. Number nine ranked on, on Madden. On, see, he's steaming. <laughs> see, yeah, he's, oh, steaming. Yeah, yeah. he's steaming. Come on. <laughs> and you know, if the microphone's off, he would absolutely denigrate some of the players that are here. <laughs> Not at all. I'm all about uplifting. You're very We're classy. all about boosting each very other up. Very classy. Even if we don't know who you are. <laughs> for more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.